Okay, welcome to tonight's uh, lesson. So we're still under vibrations and we're looking at waves. And this is lecture five. My name is Hamdid. Yeah, so we're going to start first by looking at what a wave is. From there, we'll look at the types of waves. Then apart from that, we'll look at the frequency, the amplitude, and the wavelength of a wave. Okay, so let's define what a wave is. So a wave is simply just any disturbance. Yeah, any disturbance that um, any disturbance that transfers energy yeah so waves are produced by vibrations and oscillations so while there are no vibrations or oscillations we don't expect to have a wave yeah so a wave is simply just a, dis a disturbance that transfers energy so waves like i said they are produced by vibrations or oscillations yeah, so we're going to discuss what uh, we're going to discuss what what, what we call uh, mechanical and uh, uh, electromagnetic waves. So between mechanical and electromagnetic, there is one which uses uh, which always needs uh, a, which always needs um, particles for it to be uh, for, for for it to 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 travel in short. And then there is also one which they do, which do not need particles. We're going to look at that. Which no, do not look, uh, which do not need a medium. Sorry, not really particles, but a medium. Okay. So we have. Uh, let's look at the types of waves. We have what are called transverse waves. So transverse waves are simply just, but uh, simply just waves in which particles vibrate perpendicular to the direction of travel of a wave. So examples are electromagnetic waves. And then uh, we have water waves, and uh, we have waves on the stream. Okay, so these types of waves, if let's say for instance the direction of a wave is this side, uh, this happens maybe for instance when you drop something on water, on still water, water which is not moving. And when you drop something there, you discover that there you have a wave. Maybe it will start like this. It will be here. Uh, just after a few seconds, you see it there. Just after a few seconds, you see it there. And then to keep on moving like that. So you discover that these particles will be vibrating like this as it is going this side. The particles will be vibrating like this, uh, going towards the direction of the wave. Okay, so this type of a wave has, this is how we can simplify its direction. So you can see that the particles are vibrating, going up, going down, going up, going down, perpendicular to the direction of the wave. Okay, let's also look at what are known as uh, longitudinal waves. So longitudinal waves are simply just the opposite of transverse waves. Um, since we said transverse waves uh, have particles which vibrate perpendicular to the uh, direction of the wave, uh, for longitudinal waves we discover the particles, uh, I mean we, we, we have to understand that the particles will always vibrate uh, parallel to the direction of uh, the wave. So this is exactly what we are talking about. Imagine you have a wave, uh, like this wave on the stretched and compressed spring. When you compress this spring and then you stretch it, um, with, you stretch it, uh, you discover that you have certain waves that will be moving like this. You have at one point the spring is going to be compressed, and then you have you also have a part that is going to be stretched like these two parts. Then at these two points the spring will be compressed. So what you discover is that. This compressed part will be moving, it will start from there, it will be going this side. So the particles will be uh, moving. So you discover that this compressed part, at one point it will be here. The other point you see it somewhere there. Just a few seconds you see it uh, somewhere this side. Then after a few seconds you see it coming back this side. So you discover that this is a proper way that can show us that these particles in this spring are simply moving this side and then after going this side they also after reaching the end here they start coming back this side and when you look at the direction of this wave of this wave in this spring it is still the same direction as it is going this side 
the wave is also going this side as this, the compressed part is coming back this side the wave will also start coming back this side that's what we mean by moving uh, 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 parallel to the uh, direction of the wave so let's look at what are called mechanical and uh, electromagnetic waves so when we talk about mechanical waves uh, we simply refer to those waves that require a medium for them to be transferred so these kinds of waves like sound waves sound cannot be transferred where there is no medium where there is nothing in short sound is always transferred using a particle using a medium uh, using a medium in short okay and then we have what are called electromagnetic waves these kinds of waves they don't require a medium for them to be transferred from one point to another yeah so this is what i'm just trying to talk about so electromagnetic waves do not require a particle or a, a particle medium to transfer energy and then mechanical waves require a particle medium for them to transfer the energy from one point to another and then the example that, they, that has been given here is sound waves all right let's quickly proceed let's look at the characteristic of waves so characteristics of waves we have the distance a wave oh, sorry so, so the us is the displacement so we have what uh, is called the displacement so a wave can be displaced from one point to another and this displacement this displacement can easily be defined as the distance that is moved in a particular direction so the same way you define uh, displacement um, in other topics that's the same way you define displacement even on waves it is mostly represented by the letter x and it is defined as the distance moved the distance the particle moves in a specific direction that is called the displacement so apart from the displacement we also have what is known as the amplitude so the amplitude in some books it is represented as um, a and then um, yeah the amplitude is represented by a and then uh, some represented by x naught so all these two symbols represent uh, amplitude so this is just the distance uh, of maximum displacement in short remember when you talked about a spring, a spring if you have a spring that is being attached to the wall like this uh, you discover that as you stretch it and then you stretch it going this side and then you release it to go back it will go back and then the, the second time when it comes back this side when, when it goes back this side and then the second time it will come back this side on its own it's going to um, pass the point which is called the equilibrium point so the equilibrium point is a point where the displacement of this spring or the particles in the spring is actually equal to zero then um, when it goes this side it's going to move a certain distance and then at one point this side when going this side it's going to have the velocity which is equal to zero at maximum displacement the velocity is going to be uh, closer to zero as a result at this point uh, uh, the mechanical energy sorry the in the equation of the mechanical energy rather um, the kinetic energy is going to be equal to zero and the potential energy is the, the one is the only one that you are going to have and then at this point the potential energy will not have the value x we know that it's given by kx squared a half kx squared that is the value the 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 is the formula for potential energy so this x which is just the distance moved by the spring at this point we can have x1 another point we have x2 but at this maximum displacement we count that to be the amplitude so the amplitude so at that point you discover that the formula changes to half um, k a squared why do we write a because we know that a is simply just the maximum displacement a wave uh, moves so this is exactly what we are talking about when you talk about the amplitude so amplitude is simply just the maximum displacement that the wave um, has moved or is going to move and then apart from that 
we, we can also talk about what is called the amplitude or sorry the, the period so the period is simply just the time taken for a complete wave so period is uh, mostly represented by the letter capital letter T so period is simply just capital letter T and it is defined as the time taken for a complete wave to occur yeah so that's the period and then apart from that we also have what is known as the frequency so the frequency is simply just the number of um, waves passing through a point per unit time so the number of waves so the frequency can be defined as the number of waves passing through a point per unit time so if the frequency can be written in this in this format we know that the period is simply just equal to 1 over f so meaning when we say 1 over n over t this can also be written as t over n that is the period so you don't have to uh, forget about these small simple simple formulas you have to master them okay yeah so the next thing we're going to look at is uh, I mean we talked about the frequency then the next thing we look at is the wavelength so the wavelength is simply just the distance covered by a complete wave yeah so a complete wave when when a complete wave covers a particular distance we call that distance to be um, a wavelength so it is also the distance between two successive crests or trough and it is the distance between two points vibrating in phase so when you talk about two points in phase it means that their troughs or their 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 crests are uh, are aligned in the same are aligned in short they are in the same line so we're going to discuss uh phase difference in the next slide that we're going to have in the next uh, lesson that we're going to have yeah but for now just not to say it can it is also the distance between two points vibrating in the same phase or the points that are in phase and then okay so what they mean by wavelength if you have a wave like this you have a wave moving like this so uh if you, if this is a trough which is just the minimum distance of a wave or the minimum um uh, should it should i say amplitude okay let me just say the minimum distance the wave covers going down then the highest point or the maximum point of this wave are called the crest so the distance between two crests this one and that one is the one that we call the wavelength and represented by lambda yeah, so this distance here is the one that is called the wavelength. All right, so let's quickly look at the wave velocity. So this is just the rate of change of displacement of the wave. So when you talk about the rate of change of something, it means that that thing has to include something that has to do with time. So the rate of change of displacement of the wave. So displacement of the wave changing with time is called um the wave velocity so this one can also be written in terms of uh, the period and the wavelength so when one wave makes a complete uh, uh or one or when one or when this distance is um the wavelength in short or a wave is complete in other words it means that this becomes what is called the wavelength and then uh, the time that is taken for one complete wave is called the period so meaning the time will also change to period and we know to say wavelength of a period is also the same as velocity so now when you look at this uh, remember what we said we said frequency is simply given by 1 over t so meaning this side where there is 1 over t we can write uh, this part as uh, frequency Hence, we can just have the velocity being given by uh, wavelength times frequency. So the velocity of a wave, or of a wave, or a complete wave, can also be written as f lambda, which is just uh, frequency times wavelength. Okay. Let's also look at what is called intensity. So this is just a time rate of energy uh, transfer by the wave per unit area. So we're also going to look at this in the next uh, lesson that we are going to have we'll look at it in details 
list I discussed the wave velocity and of which I believe I've explained this on the previous page so velocity is just given by displacement over time so displacement is simply x and then time is simply t then when we talk about that in terms of um, yeah so the displacement covered by a wave is equal to that the wavelength and then when t is equal to the period uh, so this gives us uh, this which i've already talked about and also leads us to finding this as the formula for velocity all right so in the above equation the, the above equation is called the wave equation where uh, lambda represents the wavelength and f represents the frequency okay so speed of waves on strings let us also look at this this one i'll just show you the formula yeah i will not be able to derive it today we may, de we, we may derive it in oh, on another topic but for today i think um yeah for today i think let's just look at the formula okay so for a horizontal fixed uh for a for a horizontal string fixed on one end under the tension f the speed of waves are given by the equation this one and then from there uh we also we can we this one this one is called the linear density and then this one is called the tension or the force in the spring in the string and then this one is the linear density which is just the string uh the, the, is the mass of a string per unit length so linear density is given by um the mass of a string per unit length so if you put it there it means that you can have something like this you can have uh, the force there over mass per unit length which can also be written as when you divide this this will be f l over m so this can also be simplified yeah when the tension there okay let me just end here i wanted to introduce something else on the tension but let me just end here so sometimes you can just be given the tension, the length of the string, and the mass of the string, you, you'll be able to find its velocity just using that. Because you know that this mu here, which is just the linear density, is given by the mass over length, over the length of the string. Right. So this is the end of today's slide. Uh, thank you very much for attending tonight's uh, lecture. See you in the next lecture that we're going to have. Shalom, shalom.